Milton, including faith formation events that continue or get started this week, including a book study that I'm leading on Tuesdays that was moved to begin this Tuesday. We also have a blessing of the animals today at 11.15, so if you have a chance to go home and retrieve your companion animal to come back for a blessing, um, we strongly encourage you to do so. It would be great to spend that time with you and to seek their blessing too. We continue to receive communion with bread alone, so please come forward for communion and remain masked as you receive the bread. We come around with a chalice if you'd like to reverence the chalice but not drink from it. And our offering plate is back here at the entrance, and so rather than passing the plate, we invite you to um, make your offering as you enter or leave. It's, again, it's good to be with you today. Open our hearts, set free our voices, guide our feet,
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of love, you give us to one another, to love and to cherish. And you are found wherever two or three have gathered in peace to call upon you. Nourish us with your companionship and teach us how to love one another. Show us your way so that all the world may be healed. and we'll say the psalm in unison. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him out. You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Reading from the book of Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed to be heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's, God's glory, and through whom he also created the world. He's, <clears throat> he is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, 
he sat down at the right hand of the, of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subject to, subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Some Pharisees came and to test Jesus they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. 
do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, friends. So lovely to see you this morning. In the spirit of St. Francis, I'd like to open our time together with a blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you. May God turn his face toward you and give you peace. We have sung this blessing together as a family for as long as any of us can remember. I trace the cross of baptism on my daughter's foreheads as I sing this to them. You might think that as they grow into teenagers and adults, they'd want to leave that behind with the last vestiges of their childhoods. But even now, when they are 20, 15, and 13, they surprise me. Even if the air is charged with the tension of inevitable arguments between mother and daughter, they raise their foreheads to me in quiet expectation. I bless them before they leave on trips, go to college, and to another school day. It's not a perfect ritual, and sometimes we forget in the rush of our lives, but it is marked every day that we have together days easy and hard, predictable and frightening. May God bless you and keep you. Needless to say, they no longer think about each of the words as we say them. The ritual of the blessing has transcended the boundaries of mind and sunk deeply into our hearts. It has become an intentional return to the familiar front door of our faith, our family, and our identity as children of God, deeply loved, perpetually welcome, sealed by grace. Words of blessing act as vehicles to deeper realities for which we sometimes have no words. We are people of words. As Episcopalians, we are certainly people of words. Throughout history, words have moved mountains, save the vulnerable, brought what was dark to light, and achieved incredible justice and reconciliation. But as we know full well, words can also be great weapons. Think of all the proverbs you've heard about tongues and words, including my favorite, where words are many, transgression is not far off. The Pharisees were master word weavers. They knew how to use words to their advantage, and they built towers of oppression and religious authority with them. They were always trying to trap Jesus with their clever rhetorical snares. Jesus always saw right through them, and he had some choice words for them as well, like brood of vipers and whited sepulchers. At the same time the Pharisees intoned the name of God, they smote their neighbor and they had it out for Jesus. In the shadows, they concocted the perfect mixture of words to bring this poor, scrappy carpenter's son who's so dangerously popular down at the knees. So here's where we enter the story today, with words and the complicated matter of divorce. This is dangerous territory, and the Pharisees have worked hard to bring Jesus down if they can, planting uh, landmines along the way. But Jesus does not take their bait. Instead, like he so often does, he steps behind the heavy velvet curtain of their jargon to what's backstage. 
the issue of justice for the most vulnerable in their society, women and children. Here's where I'll take a step away from words and blessing to give a very brief history of divorce because it's important to understand Jesus' intention here. Divorce laws and the rights of women have always been inextricably intertwined. When I was a child in Bangladesh, where I was born, I was told, and this was true, that the reason women wore gold in their earrings, on their wrists, in their noses, and on their ankles is that at a moment's notice, their husbands could say the word divorce to them three times and they would have to leave their home. Gold jewelry, if they could afford it, if they were wearing it at the time of their divorce, was the only financial protection they would have. They had absolutely no rights. Bangladesh actually outlawed this practice before India did. India outlawed this practice, which still existed under Muslim personal law, only in 2019. We know that the mistreatment of women and the marginalization of those without a voice is very much present in our culture as well. It wasn't until the late 1930s that a woman could petition for divorce as their husbands had for millennia, and even then they could be financially ruined. It was only in the late 1960s that women are in our country were granted to the ability to divorce without jumping through often impossible hoops to prove wrongdoing, like verbal abuse. Jesus knows what's at stake. He goes straight to the heart of the matter, to the injustice and cruelty that demeans the very humanity of women. Moreover, he calls men who divorce their wives adulterers. Here we see the heart of Jesus, always solidly with women, children, the marginalized, those who are not given the chance to speak their own words. Every time society robbed the powerless of language, Jesus did more than speak for them. He gave them a space for them to speak. Over and over again, Jesus humanizes the dehumanized by giving them the opportunity to use their own words. He creates space for relationship, and in doing so, gives room for the work of justice to begin. Just as he does for children in this very same scriptural passage. It's not an accident, I think, that this very dense discussion of divorce is juxtaposed with this beautiful story we all love of Jesus blessing the children. Once again, the story begins with a rebuke, and it's a rebuke of Jesus to those in this situation who have a voice. And in this case, it's, their, it's his disciples. Do not send the children away. Maybe at this point, Jesus is shaking his head with exasperation. Don't you get it by now? Here is where the kingdom is. Open your eyes and ears. If you want to enter the kingdom, you have to be just like these children. Not like the Pharisees with their perfectly constructed words. And preparing for this homily, I realize not even like me much of the time. I am excellent at armoring my heart and my vulnerability with just the right words. Sometimes I forget that the longing of my heart is for the kingdom of God. Instead, I allow my mind to be trapped in a cacophony of words that I tell myself and that the world tells me. I become like the camel that Jesus talks about who just can't quite fit through the eye of the needle or the rich young ruler who walks away brokenhearted, unable to give up my carefully curated life to follow the one who holds the words of life. But sometimes I am brought to my knees. Sometimes there are no words to make everything okay. There are no words to encapsulate my fear and my longing. And in that place of utter vulnerability, I am more like a child than usual. In those times, I want nothing more than to run through the crowd of others who have everything together, drawn by the voice of the one who loves me, knows me, welcomes my broken heart, calls me by name. 
This is the blessing of Jesus. This is the embrace that needs no words. The living water that is free to all, the spring that never runs dry, that feeds our roots and our most profound need. I like to think that when Jesus gives his blessing to children, he receives a blessing from them in return. I love so much that Jesus himself is called a word. Our book is a person, Denise Ackerman, a South African feminist theologian writes, our book is a person, Jesus of Nazareth. Like children, we revel in Jesus' blessing, and then we go out as breathing, walking, serving blessings. We incarnate the blessing of Jesus in the most radical of ways in a world that is hurting. Again, from Denise Ackerman, being blessed is not some abstract faith concept of spiritual well-being. Being blessed does not mean that life becomes an easy ride. Being blessed is not an esoteric truth. There is nothing majestic or mysterious about being blessed. It is about living in a way that makes the promise of abundant life possible, even in daunting circumstances. Bishop Michael Curry says, bless. Somebody once said that we have been blessed so we can be a blessing. Each day, make a decision. I'm going to live my life like a blessing. Many nights, my youngest daughter, even if she is so sleepy, she is mumbling, will reach out from my forehead in the darkness. Have I given you the cross yet, she'll say, and then she'll trace it with her finger. May God bless you and keep you. I carry those words with me always. They make me brave. They fill me with joy. I am a walking blessing to this world, and so are all of us in this room. And so is Lyra Cromwell, actually, <laughs> who's been with us for a very long time in our parish. She's been a blessing to me since I arrived at Grace some years ago. And I wanted to give us the opportunity to hear from someone who has been with us for so long. So I'm going to interview her for the end of our homily. Lyra, can you tell us a bit about yourself? For those who don't know me, hi. <laughs> um, Lyra Cromwell, I'm a senior at... Oh. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Lyra Cromwell. I'm a senior at Eagle Harbor High School right now, and I've been going to Grace for about as long as I can remember, and a little longer than that as well. <laughs> Lyra, I wonder if you could tell us what difference it's made to you to be part of this church community. Yes. Well, beyond the obvious of giving me a space to contemplate and grow in my faith, being part of a church community and part of grace in particular has taught me about compassion, about teaching, community, and leadership. Lovely. What do you think um, it means when Jesus says, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child can never enter it? Well, as you mentioned not long ago, I would say that it doesn't literally mean that only people baptized as infants can enter the kingdom of God. That's hardly the point of baptism after all. Rather, I think it's trying to say that to enter the kingdom of God, one must receive God into your heart and into your life with the same openness of spirit to love and connection that a little child has expecting nothing and therefore receiving everything. Lyra, if you could give a blessing to an adult in your life, what would it be? I think to everyone who needs a little bit of it right now, may you find acceptance of all the things that you can't control. And if we could give a blessing to you, what would you like that to be? May you find serenity. Amen.
understand. Together, let us affirm our faith. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life. full passion and deep sorrow, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will one day be known. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the Church. She is the spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of life everlasting. Amen. Let us rest quietly in the presence of God. Let us give thanks for God's blessings. Let us rejoice with those who rejoice. Let us confront ourselves with honesty. Let us intercede for the whole world. Let us pray for those closest to our hearts. We pray for healing for Peter, John, Alan, Leslie, Nancy, John, Ted, Elizabeth, Nicole and baby Miles, Ron, David, Mark, Claire and baby, Charles, Eli, Stacy, Glenna, Dave, Susan, Nell, Baby Lennon, Beverly, Mary Ann, Garth, Brian, Marguerite M, Carson, Julie, Doug, Mike, Barbara, Rich, Len, Susie, Ken, and Dina. We pray for support for Kay, Joni, Alan, Kathy, Andrew, Mario, and Susan, Terry and Ivor's family, Debbie, Flory, Kathy, Jim, Luke, and Mark, Justin, Sue, Theo, Susan, Anne, Mark, and Graham, Mackenzie, Ken and Susan, Chuck, Brittany and Evan, Ron, Martha,
Peggy and Nancy, Gary, Alyssa, and Ashley, Tracy, Rhonda, Cheryl, and Poppy, Robin, Beth, Marge, Paul, David, and Steph. We ask for prayers for peace for Mark, Judy, and Sharon. We give thanks for the life of Elise and Ivor. Let us rest quietly in the presence of God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. has been in touch. Uh, I think so, yeah. I want to regather us. In elementary school, if I raise my hand, people raise. <laughs> Kim, please report to me. I want us, I want you to join me in thanking Kim for her preaching this morning. Kim is our director for faith formation and she worked with Lyra Cromwell, also our preacher this morning to break open a challenging word and I'm very grateful. It's good to have you with us. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, wind, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace, you looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves, a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to come forward if you would like to celebrate with us a birthday or anniversary for you and yours this week or today. I also invite our Zoom ambassador to come forward with names of those who might have All right. Please be first among equals. <laughs> Rachel was dragged up here against her will. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, <laughs> we are still in the octave for your birthday, Martin. 27 years. Wonderful. Anyone else? Sue Maxwell, 85. Okay. This Friday, my father will be 85. So it's the season. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Be with these your servants as they celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Fill them with your strength. Send them from here with your joy and your peace. Amen. blessing of God who made the earth and all creatures and the stars in their courses, the blessing of God who became human to save us from ourselves, the blessing of God whose spirit stirs all creatures to life and sends us joyfully into the world, be among you now and remain with you always. Sing along, this is a good one. <laughs> You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Go put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front okay. of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. You're not alone, you're not alone. Don't you give up, don't you give up. Keep moving on, keep moving on. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Don't you despair. Don't you despair. Look up ahead. Look up ahead. The path 
is there. The path is there. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. I know you're scared. I know you're scared. Hey, I'm scared too. And I'm scared, scared too. But here I am. But here I am. Right next to you. Right next to you. But here I am. <laughs> right next to you. You gotta put one foot in front of the other. And lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other. And lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other. And lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other. And lead with love. And lead with love. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.